nation will go to war against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all, is, all this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. Okay? So, looking at those verses, one of the things that's quite awesome is uh, I'm a researcher by nature. Uh, I love to just dig in and explore things and to find information. I, I can sit there for hours researching things. And one of the things that God actually had me start doing a little over a decade ago was actually trying to apply the scripture where it says, and there will be earthquakes in many parts of the world. You see, a lot of times we don't realize that the earthquakes that actually happen throughout the world, we only go with the ones that you hear about in the media. It's like, oh, there was this earthquake over here. Oh, there was this earthquake over here. But those are the only ones that happen in populated areas where it affects a general population. Okay? But those are not all of the earthquakes that are recorded. And I want you to be able to see something. So about 10 years ago, this is my own personal study. This is not from uh, something else on the internet. You won't find it on the internet, what I'm going to share with you right now. Um, in 2010, when I started doing my research, what I did is I actually set a couple of uh, metrics on some earthquake websites. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to set it to earthquakes that are 4.0 or larger and see what the two-week average is for earthquakes 4.0 or larger. Why did I choose 4.0? Because of the fact that anything underneath that, most people don't even really notice. Okay? Once you get to 4.0, stuff starts to fall off of a shelf. Uh, you start to have some particular effect. So, any ideas what the average number of earthquakes, 100, uh, sorry, um, 4.0 or larger would be for a two-week average. Any guesses? Yes. I think it happened like a million times in our life. <laughs> in two weeks. In a two-week time. Uh, for, for like as long as we can, we have to stay in our house. Our own house. So, I think that's a hundred times. You know what? You're pretty close. <laughs> the, in 2010, the average two-week average, uh, sorry, the two-week average was 120 oh, of earthquakes, 4.0 or larger. Which, in 2010, I was like, man, that's a lot of earthquakes. You know, it's like 4.0 or larger and on a two-week basis, a two-week average. Mm -hmm. There's almost 40,000 earthquakes a year at that time, okay? And that's going from like a, a 0.5, just to say it got registered, all the way up to the biggest ones. Any ideas what they are today? 500. Very good. Today's average this morning was 526. <laughs> oh, it was okay? so smart. Of earthquakes 4.0 or larger. Do you realize that is huge? Are you hearing about 500 earthquakes in the news every day? No. No. Okay? So you have to realize there are earthquakes occurring everywhere. They are not simply reported in the news. And these are earthquakes that could have happened in Antarctica. Earthquakes that could happen underneath the surface of the ocean. Because remember, Scripture clearly says, in many parts of the world, it doesn't say only in the cities where the media can report it. It says in many parts of the world. The interesting thing is, is I saw the highest peak of 625 earthquakes at the last blood moon on September 27th, 2015. And since that blood moon, it's been staying in the 500 range, and I've seen it come up once to 605, the peaks are always near Jewish holidays. That's right. <laughs> and if the peaks yeah. also coincide with a full moon at the Jewish
Jewish holiday, it's even a higher peak. Right. And the last blood moon on September 27, 2015, or if you're following the Jewish calendar, it would have been September 28th, simply because of the fact that it, we saw it at night. So we know it's, and there was evening, and there was morning. So the Jewish calendar would record it as September 28th. We record it as September 27th, okay? What most people don't realize is there was a series of eight tetrad blood moons since Christ. There never was before. They're only in that block of the end times. Because the scripture says, the sun will be darkened That's and the right. moon will be turned to blood. Mm -hmm. And it does fall with the feast days. And I can go into all of that because there's actually a very specific exact amounts of years between them that categorizes other events in the Bible and it's extraordinary how it lines up. One thing that you uh, may not necessarily realize is the blood moons would be also a fulfillment of the prophecy in Joel chapter 2 right. verse 31. Okay, and the moon will turn to blood. It's not actual blood, but in a, in a lunar eclipse, the sun, uh, the moon appears red. Okay, so it's actually a lunar eclipse. When we talk about pestilences, do you know that when you look at the history of pestilences, okay, or pandemics and different things like that, it has been since the year 430 BC. Remember, the end times began March 14th, 445 BC. The pestilences started showing up in closer and closer and closer frequencies since 430 BC. When we look at famines, we've got an increased frequency and effect since 1860. And the only reason why we're saying from 1860, all the information prior to that date is sketchy. We don't have it for a whole globe. We have it only for regions of the globe. Okay? So one thing I also want you to see as I'm closing. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, one of the biggest keys that we need for and then the end will come, it says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, it says, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations, all people groups, okay, will hear it, and then the end will come. Last May, my wife and I were at Light the Fire conference in Toronto at Catch the Fire. And Andy Bird, who is the, uh, the head of YWAM, Youth with a Mission, and he actually was talking specifically about that. And at that time, in May, when he had actually preached the, the message, the following, the, the prior December, so December uh, 2018, there were several groups that had looked at it and said, which people groups have not yet heard the gospel? And they identified six people groups in the entire world. One of them was people who are uh, blind. And they actually were like, they have not heard the gospel because we need to get it to them in Braille. Mm -hmm. Okay? And do you know that since that was decided in December of 2018, it's actually said that by September of last year, now the entire world, every nation, has had the gospel preached. Amen. Doesn't mean that everybody's been saved. Doesn't necessarily mean that everybody has accepted the gospel. But the gospel is now in every single people group. Amen. It happened last year. Okay? So it's quite significant when you think of it. Mm -hmm. What I want you to understand is that end times, and especially the second coming of Christ, Todd White actually puts it the best. It is not a rescue mission. It's not simply for us to go to heaven. It is a pickup for a wedding day. Because Jesus is the bridegroom. That's right. We as the church are the bride. Mm -hmm. And he's coming to take his bride. <clears throat> he does it because he loves us. That's right. And we should be serving him and seeking him and watching for him because we love him. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like
like to do as I close. If you have never made a decision to serve Jesus, and I do mean serve Jesus, and not simply give your heart to Jesus, there's a difference. I would like you to pray the following right after me. It says, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I recognize that you love me. And you sent your son to remove the sin which separates me from you. Father, I respond to your love and repent of all past sin. Please forgive me and cleanse me by the blood of Jesus Christ. By faith, Father, I now receive your forgiveness and cleansing in the name of Jesus. And I thank you and that your word says that I am now brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ, through which I enter blood covenant relationship with you today. If that's the first time you've prayed it, come and see me after the service. If you're going to be watching this on uh, YouTube because we're sharing it with the rest of the congregation and uh, somebody in your family has never prayed it, Leave a note in the comments or contact the church so that they can make sure that they are giving you the, the proper uh, past to get connected. And with that, let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that at no time Lord, do we need to be fearful. But we should have a joyous expectation, Lord God. Our eyes should always be fixed on you. Lord, our ears should be tuned into your voice. Yes, Help us, O oh God, to dig into your word, O oh God, that nothing will distract us. Nothing, Lord, will push us away, O oh God, but that we will be dead set and locked into your presence, that you would just lead us toward you. Lord, and most importantly, Lord, that you would fill each person here, Lord, with boldness. Yes, Lord. Boldness to be able to share the gospel. Boldness, O oh God, to be able to make sure that our family, that our friends, that they know the truth, that they will not be left behind. Yes. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your love for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.